this week's episode. You might have seen, like I have, that this is wonderful. We're talking more about menopause and perimenopause, and there are articles popping up all over the place, which is absolutely fantastic. In People Magazine, the New York Times, the USA Today, the Wall Street Journal, everybody is starting to talk about menopause, and this is wonderful because there continues to be a huge gap in education about perimenopause and menopause, and I'm so excited that it's getting better. And something has happened that I'm worried about, and I want to talk to you about that. This has opened up a market for supplements that claim to help with menopause symptoms. And I want to tell you right off the bat that there is not a supplement that has ever been studied to help with menopause symptoms. And I'm going to talk more about that. Now, let's talk about what's going on with menopause just as a quick review. We're losing our ovarian hormones, estradiol, progesterone, and testosterone. So the cause of all of these really awful and very serious and significant symptoms that most of us have around perimenopause and menopause is not deficiency in some type of supplement. It's a deficiency in one or all of those hormones. The treatment for menopausal hormones has been studied so many times in the type of study that we know is valid and something that we can trust. These type of studies are called randomized controlled trials. The biggest one ever done in the United States was the Women's Health Initiative, and many of us are familiar with that. I've talked about it a lot. It was published back in 2002, so it's 22 years old, but still does have a lot of very interesting information. Perhaps the most important piece of information was that estrogen does not cause breast cancer. <laughs> So that got so muddled over the years that it's led many women to be afraid of hormone replacement. And along with many women, many physicians are still afraid of hormone replacement. But let me reiterate, every single symptom that you might be having from perimenopause or menopause is due to deficiency in one or all of those hormones, estradiol, progesterone, and testosterone and very rigorous and reliable studies, including the biggest one ever done in the history of the United States that cost the government a billion dollars, the Women's Health Initiative, showed that hormone replacement, when given in the correct doses, in the appropriate manner, not only gets rid of all of those symptoms, but it is safe. And not only safe, but also beneficial for preventing lots of diseases in the future. And this might sound like a broken record, but I think it's important to say this first before I start getting into talking about supplements that claim to do anything at all. So, as you know, if you've listened to me ever before, <laughs> hormone replacement is not only safe, as I mentioned, but beneficial, reducing osteoporosis, heart disease, neurologic decline, including Alzheimer's disease, sexual function, sleep, weight management, mood, joint pain, bladder function. There's a long, long list. And without those hormones, many of us suffer for years with those symptoms that literally could be eradicated in a week or two if you were to be given the appropriate dose of bioidentical hormones. Okay, so that being said, this fantastic new approach to talking about menopause and perimenopause in the community. A lot of very famous and well-known people and influencers are starting to enter the 45 and older group that are suffering with these symptoms and are being very vocal about it, and that's great. But, you know, we're a capitalist country, and when a problem arises, somebody will develop a cure for it that will make them a lot of money, and this is what is happening in the world of supplements. So there are I truly can say countless, but over a dozen supplements that are now being sold for the express reason, they state, to relieve menopause symptoms. None of them have been studied to work better than placebo. So let me talk about some of the products that you might see advertised out there and some of the people who are promoting them. And here's where I want to be really careful to remind you that you are smart. You are educated. Don't let somebody 
tell you that something works when you know that it doesn't make sense. This is a great opportunity for certain business entities, and many of them are run by women, which I find even more distasteful, to approach us in a very vulnerable time when we feel absolutely horrible and sell us an expensive product that has not been proven to work and then find a very high profile person to stand behind it and say how well it works. These are not doctors. These are actresses. <laughs> okay. All right. Let me talk without mentioning any product names. I am going to let you do your own research. But every single product that's being sold over the counter, so these are not FDA approved, these are herbal supplements, dietary supplements that claim to reduce menopause symptoms. You can look up and see online the many different brands that fall into this category. I'll give you an example. I love Drew Barrymore. Hey Drew, if you're listening, I thought ET was fantastic. I loved Charlie's Angels. You're beautiful and amazing, and I know you're perimenopausal and you're almost 50, but you did not go to medical school, and so I am not going to take medical advice from you. I would love to get acting advice from you, makeup advice, fashion advice, and I would take that from you, but I would not take medical advice from Drew Barrymore or anyone in that category who is saying that they're taking an herbal product that is making them feel fantastic and curing them of all of their menopausal symptoms, they're being paid <laughs> to say that. Come on, ladies, we're smarter than that. Don't let these companies make fools of us. We've spent so long getting to this point. Uh, you know, women are far from equal to men, but we're getting there. Don't let this be an example of where we act like idiots and believe something as silly as a beautiful actress telling us that a handful of herbs is going to get rid of all of her menopause symptoms because what that is doing is harming us. It's preventing us from getting the treatment that actually will work, that's been tested and proven to work and be safe for our health. Now you might think just because it's an herbal supplement, it's safe. That is so far from the truth. In fact, a high percentage of current liver toxicity cases come from overuse of over-the-counter supplements. This is a fact. You can cause enormous harm by overusing supplements, and that happens all the time. Now, this particular product that I'm referring to, and there are others that are similar, has very healthy ingredients in it, but they're mixed together in what's called a proprietary blend. So that means they're not going to tell you what it is. <laughs> so not only are you not taking the treatment that is FDA approved and proven to work in numerous massive randomized control trials, but you're taking something that you don't even know what it is. And they're not going to tell you what it is because it's a proprietary blend. It's kind of like mother's special spaghetti sauce recipe, right? She's not going to tell you the magic ingredient. The problem is you're taking this. You have no idea what it is. Nobody knows what it is except the manufacturers. And we think that's safe. I mean, let's use our brains here. I, I just Sometimes we have to fact check our thoughts. I certainly do that all the time. It does not make sense. If you are still in the camp that's afraid of hormone replacement, I respect that. But please get educated. There is so much information available about the safety of bioidentical hormones if they're given in the appropriate doses by someone who knows what they're doing. All of those are important facts. There are many studies supporting the safety of taking that approach to get rid of all of your symptoms. There are no studies supporting taking chromium, berberine, maca root, L-threonine, ginseng, valerian, you name it, whatever the heck is in these combinations. Now, none of those individual things are bad for you. In fact, some of them are really good for you. These are all really essential micronutrients. Let me talk about chromium, which is the main ingredient in this particular product that apparently made Drew Barrymore's symptoms disappear overnight. 
Chromium is great. We need chromium. And there is some evidence that our needs for chromium go up when we're under a lot of stress, for example, when we're in menopause. So by all means, eat foods that contain chromium. First of all, you could do micronutrient testing to see if you're even low in chromium in the first place. And if you are, by all means, replace it with food or even take a chromium supplement. Chromium has been shown in some studies to help us to be more sensitive to insulin. That's a good thing. So it doesn't make you lose weight. There's no studies showing that chromium causes us to lose weight. So some of these statements are way overstated. However, there are some studies suggesting that it does improve insulin sensitivity because it's a cofactor in a very complex reaction that involves sugar metabolism. So yeah, that's true. Same with berberine. Wonderful for improving our sensitivity to insulin. And each one of those other ingredients uniquely is very good for one thing or another, no question. None of those things are helping with menopause symptoms. There is not one study ever done showing that chromium, maca root, L-threonine, valerian, berberine, any of these things help with the symptoms of estrogen deficiency. Not one. And here's a funny thing, and I've seen this so many times. You've got to be smarter than believing this stuff. You may read on the advertising that it says something like, studies show a 30% decrease in hot flashes when this product is taken for 12 weeks. Something like that. that all right, well, 30% of what? <laughs> That's where we talk about absolute numbers versus relative numbers. You could have a 50% decrease in something that dropped from, say, 2 in 1,000 to 1 in 1,000. That is not clinically significant, for example. So we always want to know 30% of what? What are the absolute numbers? The other thing is, was there a control group? Did you give this product to a group of women and give another product that looks exactly the same but has no active ingredients to a different group of women and both groups have to be pretty much exactly the same as far as age, behavior, diet, hormone status, other behaviors like smoking, other health issues. So controlled trials are the standard. And of course, companies that make vitamins are not going to do that because those are incredibly expensive to do, as you can imagine. Not only that, but we want to do what's called a randomized controlled trial so that people are randomly assigned to one group or the other. That way there's no bias possible. We're not giving it to people that are more likely to be successful on purpose and giving it to people who are less likely to be successful on purpose. So they have to be randomly assigned. And then the best studies, the patients don't know what they're taking, right? So because if I think I'm taking something that's supposed to be helpful, there's a huge placebo effect. So a placebo effect means just by the nature of being given something, I'm going to start feeling better, right? So all of these things have to be taken into account in a study that's worth its weight. And studies on nutritional supplements pretty much never fit any of those criteria. They're simply, in this particular study, the company got a bunch of people to come in and said, hey, take this product for a series of weeks, and then we'll pay you to do that, and then we're going to ask you to fill out a survey at the end. Well, <laughs> of course, a large number of people are going to feel better because of the placebo effect. Whether or not there was anything useful in that supplement or not, a portion of people are going to feel better because they got lots of attention. They probably got paid to be in the study in the first place. They were thinking that it was going to work because they were told it was going to work. So this is the type of study that we're being asked to believe when we're buying a supplement that is supposed to help with menopause symptoms. So again, if you ever see any study in the newspaper, in a magazine, anywhere at all that says this showed a such and such percent change over the other option. Red flag, I don't want to know the percent. I want to know at least two things. What is the absolute number of people who had this change? Was it one in a thousand or was it a huge number that was significant? Number two, was there a control group? 
And number three, what was the study design? How did you pick these people? Were they incentivized in any way, et cetera, all the things I already mentioned? That is a study that you can start to even think about believing in the results, right? I could very easily create a study where I came up with a pill that had absolutely nothing in it, like Dr. Susan's proprietary blend of uh, sugar and spice, and I could have you come over to my house, tell you how great it was, have a celebrity come and tell you that she took it and she felt fantastic, and then I could say, take it for three weeks, and then come back, and then I'll buy you dinner, and then fill out a survey about how you felt. I guarantee you I would see a 30% improvement, probably more than that. And there would be nothing in it at all that was useful in any way. So be smart, ladies. Don't let these people make fools of us. All right? So the most important thing from all of this is, yes, some supplements are beneficial, no question. There's nothing wrong with chromium. It does have some benefits, not to do with menopause symptoms, but to do with sugar stabilization possibly, and, and all of the other ingredients may have other individual benefits, but none of them have ever been shown to help with menopause symptoms. And in the meantime, we can be suffering from some really serious health effects that we're not treating because we're believing this nonsense product is a good alternative. We may be having severe depression. People become suicidal in menopause. This isn't something to joke around with with a supplement that doesn't work. Anxiety, not sleeping, horrible hot flashes and night sweats, mood swings, weight gain, sexual dysfunction, relationships start falling apart, the divorce rate goes up. This isn't something we should be playing with. Really, I think it's highly irresponsible to have this type of behavior. I really do. And, you know, anytime there's a vulnerable population who needs help, there are going to be people who come in and take advantage of us. And this is a really good example of that. So be very, very careful. And it's expensive. Someone's making a ton of money off of this. If they can afford to pay Drew Barrymore, they're making a lot of money. And guess who's paying for it? You are. And you're not getting the help that you need. So not only are you not getting the help that you need right now, but you're putting yourself at risk for dying early from osteoporosis-related injuries, heart disease, Alzheimer's or other neurodegenerative diseases, Many, many things. So this isn't a small thing. It's a really serious problem, and it's really getting me riled up, as you can see. Now, let's just think through this again. I'm just going to mention this one more time. I understand that many of you are still afraid of hormones because the media did a really massive disservice to us back in 2002 by misreporting the results of the Women's Health Initiative study. And as a result of that, we developed this huge fear that natural hormones can cause cancer. And understandably, that sounds really scary. Well, turns out it was misreported. It was 22 years ago. We all know now, or I hope we do, that that study showed no increased risk in breast cancer. In fact, arguably showed a decreased risk of breast cancer. We don't have to worry about that anymore, but what we do know is all of the health benefits that bioidentical hormone replacement provides. And for sure, those do not come from chromium, berberine, all the other things. Not to say that those are not very, very helpful supplements for other things. So if you're afraid of taking hormones, let's just walk through this together. And I understand why that might be. First of all, let's get educated and let's Find out why we're afraid. Ask ourselves some questions. What am I afraid of? And then look into whether that is really a legitimate fear or not for you. Secondly, think about if I'm afraid of taking a bioidentical natural hormone that I've had in my body all of my life. Frankly, I can't think of anything more natural than estradiol, progesterone, and testosterone. People use these terms to get you to buy stuff. Right? They use terms like natural or plant-based or all of these other terms that sound fantastic and safe. Lots of natural plant-based stuff can kill you. Heroin, strychnine, tobacco, cocaine, 
many, many other things. There are tons of plant poisons out there. So just because it comes from a plant source doesn't mean that it's good for you or just because it comes, it's a natural mineral. It can also kill you in doses that are not measured. So if we want to use marketing terms like natural or even plant-based, bioidentical hormones are made from a plant source. Now, putting that over here, I'm afraid of bioidentical hormones that I've had in my body my whole life. Let's just ask ourselves some questions. Why am I not afraid of taking a handful of goodness knows what from a manufacturer that won't even tell me what's in there because it's a proprietary blend with zero studies to show that it's safe or effective? Why is it that I would be afraid of something that I've had in my body my whole life but completely willing to take a whole bunch of stuff that could potentially be toxic or harmful or certainly has absolutely no studies showing that it's beneficial. This is where we have to sort of do a reality check. And I'm not judging anyone because I have these conversations with myself all the time. Why is it that I feel so resistant to this thing, but I'm totally okay with that one? And sometimes we just have to admit to ourselves you know what, it doesn't make sense. This is coming from some old conditioning, maybe something I was taught or something I heard in the past, and I need to get that out of my mind and start thinking intelligently about, huh, hold on, bioidentical hormones are natural, things that our body's been exposed to all of our lives. They are shown in many, many studies to eliminate all the symptoms that I'm having safely, as well as helping me to live longer and reduce disease. So why is it I don't want to take that, but I'm okay taking this stuff that's recommended by an actress that's not proven in any study to work better than nothing? Not only that, it can cause liver toxicity and all kinds of other stuff. So it's just a, a moment in time to be really smart, ladies. We are educated. We are smart. We should never believe something in People Magazine or anywhere else or on Instagram where an actress pops up and says, this is the best thing I've ever done, and you don't need to take hormones because this proprietary blend is going to solve all of your problems. And furthermore, 30% of my friends who took it said the same thing. We are smarter than that, ladies. Don't believe the hype. So I'm going to finish this by saying there is not one single product on the market sold as an herbal supplement that helps menopause symptoms better than placebo. Not one. And every single one that has done a study saying that it works better than nothing did not do the study in a rigorous way that we can rely on. Now, those ingredients may be helpful for other things. Yes, I'm not knocking chromium or any of these other things. But please don't tell us that they help with menopause symptoms because that is not only false, but it's doing us a disservice and preventing us from living our best lives and actually getting healthy by replacing what we're missing. Menopause is not a state of chromium deficiency. It's a state of estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone deficiency. That's all I have to say about that. So I hope you like this episode. Let's be smart, ladies. Share this with your friends, and I can't wait to see you next week. Mm -hmm.